Okay, so the Boston Celtics, in my opinion, might have just had one of the best signings in all of free agency. I for sure think this is one of the biggest steals in my opinion. And this is the recent report that the Boston Celtics have just signed Danilo Gallinari to a two-year, $13.3 million deal. So basically like $6.15 million per season. And that's being all reported by Woke. And let me say it as simple as this. I was an absolute huge Danilo Gallinari fan while he was at that one season in Oklahoma. I thought Danilo Gallinari was legitimately one of the most underrated players in the NBA that season. Like, OKC really just put, like, the suicide squad together. And out of nowhere, Danilo Gallinari, like, fully bowled out for... Um, the Oklahoma City Thunder in his 30 minutes per game averaging around 19 points, 5 rebounds on 44% from 3. Then Atlanta did something really strange where Atlanta in the offseason decided to try and sign everyone and their dad and gave Gallinari like a big 3 year deal worth I believe around $16 million a season or something like that. And again it was like a sign and trade um, and at the end of the day, it was such a weird decision because how I thought Gallinari was kind of going to be set up on an NBA team would be to be a really good catch and shoot guy that can sometimes create his shot and, you know, be a big piece of the ball movement and the big piece of the offense. But at the Atlanta Hawks, for some reason, they kind of just sat him in a corner the whole game and he just really didn't mesh well with John Collins, none of that ever ended up working, and it was just a little bit of a weird thing, and I thought Gallinari should have still been starting in the NBA, I still think Gallinari could be starting in the NBA, but now you're going to tell me the Boston Celtics, who just made the finals, two of the bigger things they probably needed was outside shooting and playmaking, and they've literally ticked both of those boxes, bringing in Malcolm Brogdon, who is a, a terrific three-point shooter that can also defend really well and the perimeter. But they also brought in Danilo Gallinari, a dude that when starting, and I know he can still put up this ability because he, you know, did, he has started. When he starts for the Atlanta Hawks, he also, like, put up big numbers. When starting, can legitimately average you 19 points per game, five rebounds, and 44% from three. This dude is an absolute knockdown shooter. He is an absolute beast. And the reality is, this was a 10 out of 10 move by the Boston Celtics. They've legitimately brought in a guy now that off the bench can probably put up for them around, I reckon, 11 points per game on like 40% from three. And he's going to have an actual purpose in the ball movement and the offense, which I don't think he really had in the Atlanta Hawks, and what the best thing is, though, is the Boston Celtics play positionless basketball, and the reality is the Atlanta Hawks tried to play pos uh, positionless basketball, but just never really got there, and it just seemed like such a weird thing, like seeing John Collins, you know, at times guarding the three, and Gallinari doing all that type of stuff. It just didn't really work out on the Hawks, but on the Celtics, where they've got, like, 10 players that can guard 100% different positions, like Al Horford being able to switch on the perimeter effectively, Jalen Brown being able to guard one through four, Mark Smart being able to guard one through three, Brogdon one through three, Tatum one through four, the list absolutely goes on. This team will absolutely be positionless basketball, and I think this is going to work in Gallinari's favor quite a fair bit, because on defense, he probably does need to be guarding the power forward position. But on offense, this guy kind of floats around everywhere and he won't be kind of just limited as being the team's backup powerful. He absolutely comes in and adds so much depth. I don't think he'll play, you know, uh, like over 25 minutes per game or anything like that like he did for the Hawks this season. I think it'll be like an 18 or 20 minutes per game type of thing. But don't be surprised if he still averages like 11 points per game, 40% from three and five rebounds off the bench. This guy is an absolute beast, and in my opinion, could go down as being one of the biggest steals in the draft, especially if, like, 
are all steals in the free agency rather like especially if the celtics decide to themselves hold on a second we want to play um a little bit smaller this game and maybe robert williams and l horford you know maybe they take a step back a little bit and you know they play like i think brogdon smart gallinari tatum and brown all on the same team there's definitely a way where they can do that and they would catch a lot of teams off guard and that team would be absolutely basing it defensively um and i feel like gallinari can even low-key be a decent defender sometimes like I, I just think he's a really really good player a player that i'd kind of compare him to right now is a bit of a discount version of what kevin love is on the Cavs, where kevin love comes off the bench and he puts up like 14 and 10 a game on 40 percent from three of course gallinari will be nowhere near putting that type of numbers up like he just doesn't have that like former all-star caliber type of player in him but i still feel like he can put up a similar role where he just comes off the bench and helps create a lot of that ball movement and just spaces out the floor and shoots a lot of threes and look some nights when they're going extra defensively and all that stuff in a tall lineup he might not necessarily play as much you know but when they wanted to go for the other nights where they want that a lot of spacing and to go maybe a little smaller and even put him at the five or something like that i could definitely see him getting like big 30 to 35 minutes games throughout the season and again look we've seen robert williams and al horford have their fair share of injuries touch wood for them that that doesn't happen but at the end of the day you've got a guy like gallinari who can now come in straight away and just absolutely help out with the ball movement and this is still too because you practically signed him for nothing and the thing is dude they brought in malcolm brogdon for absolutely nothing as well they brought in a dude that legit has all-star like an all-star caliber type player who can also shoot 40 percent from three be a really good perimeter defender and he's a good shot creator like and good playmaker like he ticks everything that they legitimately needed i don't know how this team is going to look on paper if i was the celtics i would probably bring marcus smart off the bench but as one of my friends pointed out you don't really want to bring your defensive player of the year off the bench i wonder if they bring l horford off the bench and just give the keys to robert williams where they say hold on a second we'll have brogdon at the one smart at the two a uh, brown at the three tatum at the four um williams at the five and then off the bench you'd have like um like a peyton pritchett at the one you would have you know you, your l horford would come off the bench dylan Gallinari would be there as well grant williams um among the other players aaron neesmith they've still got all of those type of players would be a really interesting thing and i definitely know i'm forgetting someone off that bench but that's just how like deep their team is they've got definitely a lot to kind of look at a lot to look forward to and i think personally there is definitely a long way to go for the celtics team um, in terms of still getting back to the finals and all that type of stuff but i think the way that they're building and you know kind of getting all those assets back and improving the team like bringing in these two really solid players don't be surprised if they're the best team on the east again because they're just absolutely really dominating this free agency and they've brought in another steal through the trade and through free agency but of course if you haven't already please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for the latest nba content and nba news don't forget to comment your thoughts and opinions down below do you guys think this was a good move by the boston celtics to potentially bring in you know uh, malcolm brogdon and Danilo gallinari do you guys think these were steals definitely let me know or even the biggest steal in free agency because i really like Danilo gallinari i think he's a great player um of course, don't forget to subscribe to my gaming channel, my IRO slash Lauren channel, and my podcast. I'll all be linking them down below. And yeah, as I was saying, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.